Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. We are up to episode 22 and things are starting to take shape. As you can see now, this was episode 21 and I think we've got a lot of progress done here over the last few episodes. We've built up this God's Hill area and it just has taken shape. The last episode really has fulfilled that sort of quota and it does now look like a complete area. And I'm really happy, really, really happy of how this has come about. Lots of nice comments as well regarding how well this has come about and the progress we've made so far and the realism of the roads and the networking and everything like that. Even the tractors are apparently a, <laughs> a more of a realistic thing than I first anticipated, but we'll talk about that a bit later on. But all in all, really, really happy of how this episode went. And we're going to be moving on to something very different now. I know I've hinted about this for quite a number of episodes and it's an episode that I had so much fun. I really had so much fun building this. So let's get into it now, shall we? Without further ado, we are on episode 22 and we're going to be building the God's Hill Model Village. Yes, you heard me correctly. I am attempting to recreate the God's Hill Model Village. And if you're not a fan or aware of what a model village is it's a quite a popular thing in the UK where people basically create very miniature builds very much like we do in City Skylines which is why I thought this is a perfect episode to tie in with the series so basically people create these small miniature buildings houses cars and basically make a scene and people go around and have a look and there's always these beautiful lovely flower arrangements all around and I was always excited to try and do this it wouldn't have been possible without the mods on the workshop, so a huge shout out to everyone involved in that, especially Simon, because I'm using the procedural objects mod to its absolute limits here today. And you'll see as we go along in this episode, I pretty much use PO to change the size of everything I'm using in the Model Village build. So it's it was a challenge. You'll see as we go along, this was a big challenge, but when I thought about this, when I first started working on the Isle of Wight, there were certain locations I was really, really excited to build. And we've done quite a lot of them already. We've done the Osborne House. We've done the uh, the main uh, ferry port in at Fishbourne as well. And the Needles is definitely a place I wanted to build. And this place here was one I always was looking to do. And my plan was when I started working on this area, especially when we started working on God's Hill, this was always the anticipation that this was always going to be the end part of God's Hill, creating this. And you, people may have noticed that this was going to be the final episode for this particular build because I did leave a big space where the model village actually is. And I did throw out a few clues to you guys by saying it's one of the sort of the focal points of this village area where people come and visit. So if you did know, if you did guess it correct, firstly, thank you for not telling everyone, but if you did, let me know in the comment section if you knew that this was going to be the episode I was um, hinting about for the, <laughs> the last two or three weeks. Let me know in the comment section below. So the layout of God's Hill Model Village in particular is difficult to recreate. Um, the difficulty I had is I wanted to have paths going around because I wanted people to walk around and create the realistic feeling that people are here. The Obviously the main thing about this is I wanted to have people walking around because then you can see the comparison between the two because to be honest, if you didn't have people walking around and you zoomed in, it would just look like a normal build until you zoom out and see the, how big the actual houses are and the cars on the road. You wouldn't really be able to tell that this was a model village. That's how good this game is. And obviously all I'm doing is shrinking down these assets that people have put onto the workshop already so I wanted to make sure that it was going to come to life um, so I did create this sort of ring road all the way around the actual um, model village layout so to speak um, and I added a few more as well just to sort of map out what my intentions were so in terms of what I put down we're not going to copy it like for like the first part here we're working on here this is actually identical to what you see as soon as you enter the um, the God's Hill model village. This part here, the little airfield, is the first thing you see and it's laid out pretty much identical to how I create on screen here. And this was so much fun. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's the fact that we are creating a model inside a game that you create your own models in. It's a, it's almost like a you know an inception of 
of your mind really when you're doing this it doesn't seem <laughs> it doesn't seem real um, and I just wanted to create this as close to perfect as I could especially this first part when you walk in because this is the part that everyone remembers when they first visit the model village it's not the most spectacular part of the village um, itself but um, it's one of those ones you remember because it's the first thing you see and you're you know you're, you're always taking that at the very start so I'm going to show a few little clips on screen now of what God's Hill model village looks like and you'll see that the little air field we're doing here even the addition to the little post holding up the plane is pretty much identical and I just loved creating this realism it's so so fun the layout itself as well like I said it's not perfectly um, similar to what we are working on here but I'm adding in the areas that I remember from memory um, and trying to recreate those as close as possible. However, before we could even get into the fun of placing down what you're seeing on camera, I spent a number of hours before this basically going through all of my collections and my props, assets, trees and selecting out the ones that I wanted to include in this build. So obviously that included picking out the correct trees and bushes now we had to try and find the right size of trees and bushes that would fit this environment. So what I mean by that is a small bush to the game in terms of its actual life size would technically be a large tree for the model village. So I had to try and find bushes and trees and plants that worked in that sort of way. But one thing you tend to see a lot in these model village builds and locations around the UK is their array of flowers and trees are so pretty. They use some beautiful colors lots of unique looking trees that are often cut into um, irregular shapes and they just really do stand out well and I wanted to create that feeling in this build so I did go through and find a lot of brightly colored plants that I hadn't really used before um, to try and recreate that feeling other than that we had to try and find the assets and props that were able to be shrunk down by PO which a lot of them aren't especially walls and some fences I found that were quite difficult especially the ones that fit the the, um, the environment perfectly unfortunately didn't work so we did have our limitations a little bit in respect to that and another thing as well when you shrink down so much stuff and then want if you wanted to repeat it like you can see here on camera it is a bit fiddly I had to do a lot of zooming in and trying to really get precise um, sort of detailing drop downs with my placement of my props and assets and it did take a lot of time but you know it's all in all it's definitely worth it the outcome I'm hoping as you can see towards the end of this video really did show that was well worth doing but that's the sort of procedure I had to go through before I even started to place down so it did take a lot of time I, I will say that but it was still enjoyable you know I'm doing something different I've not used a lot of PO recently so going from that to basically creating a build from scratch to be in pretty much 90% PO was um, refreshing to say the least and I did learn a few little techniques along the way as well which I can use in future builds not so much model village wise but you know the concepts of a certain things I had to do to achieve certain results certainly helped with that which was actually really fun Another thing as well that I tried to do, obviously I used a lot of um, Google Images to try and recreate certain parts of this um, build. The I'm guessing the buildings themselves in God's Hill are a little bit more dated, so we're talking more very old fashioned thatch roofs and stuff, whereas the buildings that I'm using here are more village style, they're obviously a much better looking build than what they you would tend to see um, in the model villages, typically the model village buildings and houses have been around for so so long that um, you know they are starting to corrode around and they're not as pretty and they may have been you know made with different materials as opposed to the most recent ones so that was obviously hard to, to recreate but I wanted to really just show off the concept that you can create you know these model villages and just make things look really unique because I know I know that no one has done this before and it's um, a very unique different sort of build that I just had in my head for so long that I just wanted to get down and it was it was a concept that I didn't know if it would be possible to do but I'm hoping by the end of the video you will also agree that it was able to be pulled off and certainly with PO as you can see here I was able to shrink down a whole train station which is just ridiculous like how many people would have thought you'd be able to do that 
in this game you know a few years down the line of, of launch like this is a project that no one would have even considered doing because it would be impossible and also due to the recent release of the um the train track pack as well i was able to actually recreate the look of a train track which at first i was really struggling to find a way of creating a train track because before i found these assets on the workshop recently released I had no idea. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and if, if anything, I was almost considering leaving a train track out, even though it is a very iconic part of a model village, having a train track and a train going around. So this was an absolute lifesaver. And it came out literally, I think, probably four or five days before I started to um, started to place down the actual building on the, the actual model village itself. So that was a lifesaver. And it just looks really cute, you know. It just reminds me of, you know, the typical typical uh, loft-based train set that people used to have. My granddad used to have one himself in the loft, which went around the whole of the, the loft interior. And it just gave me that sort of feeling, and it just looks so cool. So another thing that's from the model village itself in God's Hill is pretty much a beach theme look, little scenery. So I wanted to try and recreate that, and I did think about putting down a little pond of some description that actually used the game's mechanics of water but that didn't really work because as soon as you put down the, the actual water obviously the terrain changes which change the heights and you know all in all that means that anything I've placed already would then probably need to be readjusted and replaced after so instead of causing myself a lot of aggro and pain I decided to use Ronix's um, water decals I guess they're classed from the workshop and put down some sand at one side and some of the rocks at the other to recreate the feel of a beach and along with some of these props and assets like these um, umbrellas and surfboards and we put a few little um, fishing sheds in it just comes to life again um, really really happy of how that came about and we use some of the trees and the rocks here to kind of finish off this this little scene and it almost reminds me a little bit of um, how Crumb McGee used to build in his city skylines builds and he used to do some amazing work and it's still available on the work on the YouTube today. Um, but he used to build these little scenery um, sort of builds and it, this is what it reminds me of. Once I'm doing this uh, model village build, it just gives me that sort of feeling that how Crumbs McGee used to build um, in City Skylines. It's pretty much the way that I was building this model village, just doing very small little scenes, um, detailing them and then moving on to the next one. And I really did enjoy that. It's making me really think about doing something like that as well in the future with regards to an actual proper build. And I've got lots of cool concepts and ideas on how I could portray that. And one of them, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go down that route at some point, but it's not gonna be anytime soon. It's just an idea as a concept for the future. But um, yeah, let me know what you think about doing some small, detailed little builds which aren't part of the Isle of Wight, aren't part of Monaco, just something very different. Let me know if that would be something you'd be interested in seeing. Let's have a look at the comments that you guys left in the previous episode. First up, we have Martin Curry. Martin states about the bungalows being so many in the island, especially for the retirees. Most of the bungalows were built in the 60s and 70s before they started to clamp down on development in the smaller villages. And bungalows, yes, Martin, that is a fantastic idea and certainly a build that I have considered. I know there are some nice UK bungalows on the workshop, so we will definitely look into that. Up next is Gary. Gary says, great episode, difference in garden size would be nice. Would really like to see Ventnor Beinecke Gardens or an area like Victoria Avenue, Shankling, Big Tree Line, Grand Victorian Streets, Old Large Hotel, Cricket Pitches nearby. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much for that, Gary. And I do really want to do, especially the sort of hotel Victorian sort of street front by the seaside. I think that'd be really cool. And definitely the Ventnor Gardens are top of my list now after enjoying placing down all of these gardens in this model village. So that is certainly something I will look into. Skate Metrics is up next. He said, very nice. You definitely captured the layout of the British suburbs with the first, the older compact terrace of the 19th century, then the semi-detached properties of 1920s and 30s, and then the council houses from 1950 to 70s. To the moderns of today, the layout of the road is perfect in its Mirandian fashion. And I'm really glad you said that because I put a lot of effort in to the placement of these properties and the roads. So top, top reply. Thank you for that. 
Timo is up next. He says, meet some shops on the street that go to the town. Build also a football field for a non-league team because every town has a football club in the UK. That would be cool. And that really would be cool. I definitely have had a lot of comments recently saying about put down a football stadium or field of some description. Now we have done that recently in this video here. We did place down a miniature football um, ground, but yes, I do want to add that down. If anyone knows of a suitable location on the island that has a you know, semi-professional looking stadium of some description, let me know and we'll have a look on Google Maps. As always guys, thank you very much for all your comments. I do read every single one and reply to all that need to be replied to. So please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section because they are always welcomed. So here we're trying to recreate the sort of seaside hotel front on the um, the beach side. So these buildings here on the workshop are perfect for that. They are pretty much exactly how you would imagine the seaside sort of mini hotels or apartments to be. And you can see again, the, the sizing is all done on each building one by one, unless I'm copying it, which in which case we can copy and paste. And, You'll note there as well, I did change the size and I wanted to mention about the size of these buildings because probably a lot of you probably be thinking that actually these model villages are probably a little bit too big. Um, and that's all preference because some model villages have much larger houses than others. Some are a lot more smaller than others and I decided to go for this sort of slightly larger size just because it works better for the game. If I made them too small, it was difficult to really, you know, show them off in their true textured light. So, you know, it just felt that if I went too small, it just wouldn't really look as nice um, in the cinematics. And I didn't want to reduce the quality too much of these beautiful looking buildings. So this is why we went for this size. And I think the actual size of the buildings on or in God's Hill are slightly smaller. I think it's kind of... If you're six foot, it's kind of just below, well, just below your shoulder, above your waist sort of size these buildings are, but it still works. And that's the reason why I went for that, if anyone was wondering about the sizing. So now we are moving back onto the train line. So I wanted to create some sort of a, a train track line. Obviously I couldn't be too um, creative with this I would have obviously loved to have done bridges and you know a different type of style a track of it going around corners and bending around the whole um, build itself but it was just going to be too much effort I mean I just about made it look good with these props on the workshop um, and these tunnels to kind of hide away the ugliness of this but you know in in a proper model village you'd have the train going around maybe not the whole of the perimeter of the build um, but it would definitely be going around and being a bit more of a focal point than what it is here this is more of a sort of a side um, project -y sort of build as opposed to the one of the main parts of the area but it had to be put in and I'm really pleased with how it turned out really happy that you can PO some of the train stations because without that it would have been difficult to really make the train station look like a train station it would have just probably just been a track with some trains on and wouldn't have looked anywhere near as detailed as this and you'll see as well i've kind of kept to a similar theme in regards to the foliage the types of trees and bushes that i'm using are quite common and you know they're very similar so i am copy and pasting a lot of these across and trying to make it look and feel like it's a you know the, the spectacular um, show in terms of the flower arrangement as much as it is the model village because like I said earlier the two work hand in hand really nicely. Another thing that was difficult was choosing the right um, sort of enclosures I guess the gates the walls it was quite difficult to find ones that suited the area and were also able to be PO'd or they were right for the environment so that was obviously a bit of a, a struggle to find those i did in the end get some good hedge, hedges together which i po'd and 
you know, I just wanted to try and make the each zone or you know project area that I'm working on work with what I put around it. So for example, these houses here, this is more likely to have just trees and bushes and little sh um, shrubs and that around it as opposed to the um, train track would have a wall around it. You know, just trying to make it feel a bit more natural and make it come to life a bit better. Now, before you ask, yes, they are miniature cows. <laughs> um, I wanted to make things realistic. I wanted to have like a little farm village area as well because um, it just would, it just felt like I, it would fit this area because we've got the campsite there. Typically on the back of campsites, you have big fields with farmer fields, etc. So I wanted to do something like that. And you know, the, the miniature cows are obviously well needed. This hot air balloon as well, you probably find it quite a irregular thing to have at a model village. Maybe it's not, I've only been to a, a couple in the UK, but in God's Hill, I believe there is a, um, a big balloon which takes up quite a lot and it really does give a really cool look when you're looking throughout the actual uh, model village itself. You can see all of these little areas and you can see this big balloon and blimp in the background and I really like the look of that and because this one is so colorful as well, I thought that one would be really nice to, to work with. So here you can see now we're putting down the hedgerow around the field and I wanted to create a, um, a little build here as well, uh, more of a farmer's field with a farmhouse across it as well. So again, we're using the hedges to create the zone itself and luckily most of the decals that I was using kind of worked. Like I couldn't really use the main dirt decal here because it'd been way too big for this build but these two I think they're well, they, are they the dirt paths or I forget what they're called but they work really well for this build it just looks like a farm field and the two sizes together side by side just work really really good together so all in all the detailing and the the um, I'm guessing the pre-planning was quite a lot more than what it would normally be for an episode for me personally um, picking out the right trees and bushes and just trying to think as you go along to make things look more realistic because you know there's only so much you can do I didn't want to do too much in terms of heavy detailing in this build but I still wanted to do enough that when you're looking it looks like a model village and not just a couple of random buildings that have been PO to about 20% of their, their original size now on the topic of farms I am running a little fun project for you guys do you want a chance of building something on the island for this series so what i'm planning to do is i am offering you the opportunity to build yourself a small little farmhouse very small plot i'm saying around eight by eight in terms of cells in terms of the size just to build a small farmhouse plot and when i say farmhouse plot we're not talking about the fields don't worry about that i just want the actual housing part with maybe the the barn and storage locations with some detailing around it that's all i'm looking for here because my intentions are there's a lot of countryside on this island and i want to use your farmhouse builds to place down next to the farms so for your chance of doing so all you need to do is jump into the discord or dm me on twitter if you don't use discord and i'll send you the details and we can get that going so far we've already had 12 people who have submitting a farmhouse so i'm going to be slowly implementing them throughout the series and we'll show them off in an episode so if you're interested do get in touch so back into the build we're working on this little area here so this is actually a part of the build that's real life so when I say real life this is actually meant to be for the people it's not a miniature build so this is the toilet area alongside the toilet area is a little seating area with a park there so this is the sort of you know the, the hangout part of the build um, you tend to find this it's quite a common thing to have where there's a little segment of the area where you can get some refreshments um, or you can have your picnic and the kids can go on the swings and keep themselves busy you know all that sort of stuff which is really cool. Now this is probably one of my favorite part of the build. Now what we're doing here, as you may have noticed from these three buildings put down in a wall, we are basically creating the model village as a model village in a model village. So yeah, definitely some sort of inception going on here in terms of how it's gonna end up. So we are basically gonna create another model village inside this model village and have people um, overlooking it as props to 
make a really interesting scene and you do tend to see this quite a lot quite a lot of the model villages they do have a model village within that and i thought it would be a really cool concept to have that in here it is part of um, god's hill there is a part of there where they have got it and i think there's a little sign saying this is a model of the model you're looking at which is a really cool concept i really like the idea so we've kind of obviously we've had to go much smaller scale again so it's quite hard to really do this properly because we're already struggling at the size of a of the miniature model we're now going another sort of you know another 80 percent smaller <laughs> than what it was before so we've gone for something a little bit more simplistic but i wanted to kind of create the look we've kept the kiosk there we put the church in the background and a another little house there but i think this is a really cool thing i was really pleased with how this came out this little segment and um it's a you know it's a little quirky thing that i think is um um well well we needed in this build so really really pleased with how that came about you notice as well each time i have a different type of tree or plant i'm just spreading it around just to add to the depth of these bushes and that because there's only so many that we can use in this build i wanted to get as much down and get as much variation as possible now this last segment was the last part that i had to build and i was trying to think of what we could do that was slightly different um, and in the end, I just went for a more um, village look and also a much earlier sort of 1920s sort of build in the top left, well, bottom left hand corner, as you can see it now. Um, again, just pretty much just placing down artificial pathways and just trying to make things look a little bit more different. Um, that was the trouble I had with this. There was only a certain amount of things I could do which would work and um, be realistic in terms of this being a model village which you know it's not really realistic anyway because you shouldn't be able to do this in the game to start with so um, I just tried my best to try and make things look a little bit different each time the flower arrangements around always do help and we didn't talk yet but we also did work slightly up there on the uh, the theme park or the circus which I thought was a uh, another cool thing to add so I was just trying to think of different things to add each time and yeah i did get to the point where i was running out of ideas um i probably to be honest i probably could have spent another five hours playing around with this build but it was already 10 hours worth i think of gameplay um, and that was not including the um the work that i had to do to actually um get all the props and assets reduced in their size so yeah i didn't want to go too heavy into that but that does bring us pretty much now to the end of this very exciting episode. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was so, so fun. I'm not to say that. This is probably one of the most fun episodes I've built. Apart from some of the earlier Monaco ones, this has probably been my favourite to date. Certainly this year, this has been really, really fun. And I'd love to see if any of you guys are also going to have a go at trying to build something like this because... It's really, really cool, really fun to do. Takes a bit of time, but it worked for me. I'm really happy, and the results I am so pleased with. These final cinematics are so, so good. I really do, do, do have to say so myself. I'm not really one for blowing my own trumpet, but they worked so well together. Make sure you stick around for the final cinematics and yeah i think that's pretty much it i could have spoken for another hour about this build and the details around this beautiful model village because it is really nice and if you are happy if well if you are lucky enough to go to the isle of Wight at all this year or in the future definitely check out god's hill because it is sensational really really good place you have to visit if you come to the island that is for sure other than that guys, make sure you follow me on social media if you are interested in what I'm doing. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And for more content and so you don't miss it, please subscribe and hit that bell icon. Other than that guys, have a great rest of your weekend and have a good week and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching and all the best.